Hello. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is start duplicating to in order to make our kind of arena thing. So, press F4 so I can see what I'm doing. Press H, box one. Now, this was just imported from another save file. Okay, it's just another one of these. So, I'm just going to apply an edge checks to it. Just before I push it in. Make sure it's uh, got the same sense as the last one. Now, bear in mind, you're starting to get a very, very polygon-intensive scene happening, alright? So, if your computer is starting to make funny little groaning noises and bursting into tears and begging you for mercy, then it's either time to stop doing the tutorial or time to get a better computer. Alright, now I'm going to attach this. There we are. Starting to get somewhere. Right, so this is a single unit block. This is an edge, or corner rather. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a copy of our corner. Mirror everything as a copy. And just bring it over here. Now, the problem with that is that all the normals are reversed, as you can see. So, convert to edible poly. And, ooh, let me see. No, 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 no. What am I doing? Oh, yes. Select everything and flip. There we are. And that's how you kind of sort that problem out. Okay. Now, if this is our end, which it so obviously and patently is, <laughs> what we're going to do is make two copies of this. Just go to my top viewport so I can make sure I do it properly. and shift and drag and I'm keeping them separate, I'm not going to attach them together for the moment simply because that way if I want to conserve memory or whatever I can the quick thing I need to look at here is what's in that hole Good. Just wanted to make sure there was something in that hole. Got a bit of an overlap going on here, so let's continue. Okay. And again. Wait for 3ds Max to stop screaming at me. There we are. Now I can take this piece. Shift and drag it down and attach it to there. Okay. That's a good start. Drop into perspective and have a look. So there's the three docks. <coughs> So that appears to be working okay. Now then, I'm only, I think, going to have these going in one direction. What I mean by that is probably just one corner. So, we'll take just one of these units, rotate by 90 degrees whilst holding down Shift, and copy. Top viewport again. Okay, and just fit these into place. Like Lego, but without the uh, pieces that tell you you're doing it the right way. There we go. Add another docking ramp a bit further up. Okay. Drop the perspective. Have a good look. 
Yep, that's looking good. I'm happy. Okay, next thing I need to do then is select all these. Make sure that's not selected. Got to get this bit right now. Should probably take this up with me actually. Now let's have a look and see how many polygons we've got so far. Nearly a million. Max ain't gonna like that very much. It's gonna like this even less. Because this is why I designed it this way, you see. 1.159 million polys. Lovely. Wait for perspective mode to stop screaming. Okay, now I'll move these to one side slightly. Like so. That enables me to put this in. Just there. Let's move that along a bit. Just so it's in roughly the right place. Okay, that's fine. Now I have to take this piece and drag it to there. Like that. Right, we're at one point two million polygons now. Isn't this exciting? Auto save. It'll take a moment or two now because the file is quite large. <laughs> okay. As you can see now, there's plenty of space and plenty of room for fighters. No danger of us running out of room any time soon, anyway. perspective again and just slide it to place more or less there we go and just clip that down
And what we've got to do next, obviously, is pop these pieces up there. And it'll be just about ready, more or less. Now, I think I could probably just trim off some of these bits at this edge, because I'm not going to be using all of these for the moment. Deselect that one. OK, get rid of them. Makes things a little bit quicker, as you can see. It's positively nippy. Grab this one and this one. OK, quick copy. Man, that's a lot of polygons. Top view port and zoom. There we go. Drop in a perspective. Yeah, that's nice. Quickly make a copy of this one. So I've got to fill this gap. There we go. So we've got 12 building units, or thereabouts. So now we can see how they all fit together. Corner piece included. Close it. There we go. Yeah, that's quite nice. I like that. Okay. Zoom in a bit. It's not bad. Turn that into a camera with Control C. Let's just uh, select my camera target, which is over there somewhere. Yeah, that's better. That's definitely better. OK, then, so I'm quite pleased with that. So the next thing we're going to look at, then, is we're going to build ourselves a ground for our dock. Now, obviously, I'm not going to keep this all up the way it is at the minute, because, frankly, it will kill the computer and make it cry and weep. So the safest thing to do, really, is going to be um, probably using an XREF or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to finish saving. Once it's finished saving, I'm going to save this as our XREF object. if I can use the computer again. Xref objects one. High poly. Very high poly. And just click save. Look out the window. Whistle. Think of products I might be interested in purchasing. I mean, if you think about it, we're at this level already, and I haven't really done that much detail. I mean, sure, we've got shed tons of pipes running everywhere, and detail galore, but we can do more if we wanted to. Wouldn't really recommend it, though, because you might blow your computer up. It's probably already struggling. All right, then, a quick uh, file. Uh, uh, reset. Do I really want to reset? You know what? I probably do. Listen to 3D Studio Max. Slowly empty its memory. It's happy again. Oh, what joy it is. Now, let's go to File, and we'll do an XREF scene. What the hell? Add XREF objects 1 high poly. Now we wait, because there's quite a bit there. Okay, that's fine, and 
Display options visible or box. Hmm, 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 hmm. That'll do. Okay, so now, as you can see, our objects are now x ref into our scene. Now, the choice we can make here when we x our objects are, we can have them in the scene in full as they are now, which is still going to be a memory-intensive hog of nastiness, or we can x them in merely as um, boxes. Now, in this instance, really, it's going to be better to x them in as boxes, because if you look, it loads in each one of them as we need it, and this is going to take some time. So, let's wait for it to finish, and we'll go to the x scene. Here's our scene here. Let's uh, change display options to box and close. Might need to reload our XREF objects actually. Display options are visible as box. There we go. Now, as you can see, these are XREF objects. They're not taking up any space in the scene. We can unhide anything we want, it doesn't particularly matter. We can still use the camera. And if we render out, all these things are going to be visible. But, they're not taking up a ton of real estate. So we can work on other things if we want to as well. And that's one of the things that makes XRFs useful. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is have a look at making a floor for our dock. Well, a kind of ground area for our dock, rather. So, until then, thanks for watching. See you in the next bit.